All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Rob Ferguson, who is in Texas. How are you doing, Rob? Terrific, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Rob has been a trusted advisor to family businesses since 2010. Prior to being an advisor, he did a distinguished career in leadership including 10 years of C at CEO uh, at two different companies. One was public uh, with 300 million revenue, the other family business with 100 million in revenue, where he successfully managed the restructuring and sale of the company. And, and today uh, you, uh, you work with family businesses, which uh, just before coming on air, we're just saying is a really interesting, interesting niche. So um, first of all, um, Rob, family businesses, they come in all shapes and sizes, right? Yeah, they really do. And um, I think most people don't understand how dominant family businesses are here in, uh, in America. I mean, it's, it's driving close to 70% of our GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, um, a third of our Fortune 500 companies are family-owned businesses. And um, there's also, I don't know, thousands of dry cleaners and liquor stores mm -hmm. and restaurants that are all family owned businesses. So we, as consumers, we interface uh, with family businesses every day. We're very, and we depend on these family businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's interesting what you just said there, just for, for context for people. Cause oftentimes I, I would say the majority of people, when they think of a family business, they think of something local, something small or whatever. But family businesses can go all the way, as you said, to like to to, to fortune, you know, 500 companies yeah. can be family owned as well. So it's not a it's not a size thing uh, at all. No, no, it's not. It's it's really about, um, you know, the definition of family owned is who owns it. Right. Who's, yeah. who's got the controlling interest of that business. And um, so that's our area of uh, focus and expertise. Mm -hmm. So what are what are some of the what are some of the if you like unique challenges that a family business faces that uh, you know when you work with them? What do you what do you find that some of the challenges are? Um, well, they come in various forms, but if I characterize them in a couple of groups, one is um, around strategy implementation. Um, they might have a good vision and a good strategy, but they're just not able to get it done. So mm -hmm. that's a big challenge. Um, another one would be around um, company governance. Um, succession planning is, a, is another area that we really focus in on. And then uh, I think the last one that's becoming a little bit more active for us is um, uh, profit optimization. Mm -hmm. So those, those are, and then, there, there's other challenges below those those buckets, uh, and those primarily the common challenge amongst all of those is um, the family dynamics and the uh, culture of the business. Right, right. So yeah, so speaking on that, obviously the the family dynamics, depending like who's involved in the business and what levels they're involved with, and that, uh, I guess it it comes with advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. A lot of advantages. Family-owned businesses uh, have a longer lifespan than uh, S&P 500. Uh, for example, uh, S&P 500 average lifespan is 15 years. Family business 24 years. Um, family businesses um, have a longer horizon uh, than a non-family business. Um, so they, family businesses, tend to think in generations. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-family businesses tend to think quarter by quarter <laughs> or, or maybe three years to three years, something like that. Uh, the other thing, too, is, is uh, the culture of a family business. Uh, this is the secret sauce of a family business is somehow they're able to recognize the family value elements that should be integrated into the business culture. And um, once that becomes um, identified and they're very intentional about making that happen, it really gives the family uh, business uh, an advantage against non-family. The downside to family business, um, uh, succession planning for non-family members, right. um, 
and 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 then I would say um, change change management, uh, family mm -hmm. businesses, uh, all bi all businesses resist change, but change sure. is inevitable. But family businesses tend to hold on to their legacy a little bit with firm, firmer hands, with as opposed to changing their point of view that oh we're going to build on the legacy, we're not going to throw the legacy. Right. Away. So um, those are those are some downsides. Yeah. And and one thing you mentioned there that's uh, that's really interesting is the culture piece because. Um, in most organizations, their culture you know, tends to grow organically, tends to come from whoever happens to be in the leadership position at the time, yeah. tends to kind of dictate what the culture is, unless you set about deliberately, you know, trying to set a culture. With the, with the, with the, with the family business and bringing family values and that into it, it seems to me like it's it's almost more deliberate and intentional and uh, you can create the, the, you know, the kind of culture that you really want. Yeah. Not only that, but you can uh, move it from one generation to the next generation mm -hmm. because the, the, the family members are, have grown up inside of those family conversations around the dinner table or at the family reunions. And so when they, they see the family culture in action and they, they participate in it and they have a sense of uh, pride around something that's really important to their family. Could be philanthropy, it could be community, whatever that is, it then is integrated into the business culture. It's not the only element, sure. but it's part of it. And um, that really makes the family business so much more uh, competitive uh, mm -hmm. from, from a lot of angles. So when you work with a business like that, is that one of the first things you try to uncover is what their their family values are, if you like? Yeah, absolutely. We spend a lot of time on that, try to understand the, the history, the legacy. Um, every family has a story about the struggles, particularly in a multi-generation business. The, the, a lot of times you hear the same thing. The first generation built it from nothing and struggled and always had the man's boot on their neck and never really enjoyed the fruits from their, their hard efforts. Second generation was able to really scale it and make it into something and grew in affluency. And in the third generation, um, uh, killed the company. <laughs> so on, on, on that note, I mean, it's gotta be one of the, um, I mean, regardless of whether it's a it's a family company or any company, like succession planning and bringing the right people through. I mean, that's always that's always a challenge. I can imagine in a family business, it has that additional element of of a challenge in terms of, uh, you know, if it's a, if it's a generational family business, like which one of the of the children or or members of the family are best suited for which roles going yeah. forward because you know I may be I may be the eldest son and think you know I should be the I should be the next CEO of the company but that's just not where my talents really lie yeah. maybe I'm a better operational person or whatever but that may be a difficult thing for me to hear yeah no absolutely so we uh, we had a client it was the fifth generation was running it um, so it was a hundred years old. Yeah. And the way the, the executive positions were all filled because their father or mother held that same position mm. and their grandfather held that same position. And so what we found out is the skill set and the talent and that, the actual motivation just wasn't there um, because they felt like they just had to do what the previous right. generation did in front of them. So the way we break that uh, kind of thinking is uh, we ask a pretty simple question, which is really hard to answer when we first engage with a family client. And that is, are you a family first business or are you business first family? Mm. And as they think about that and then they answer it and then they have to make they have to define it, you know, objectively define well, whichever one you pick, let's let's put some objectivity to it. Um, we obviously have experienced and we believe that business first families have a much longer lifespan than a family first business. Mm -hmm. But we don't pass judgment on which is better, which is good. Um, there's plenty of successful family first businesses out there. And again, we engage with them quite often. But a business first family, 
their their longevity is going to uh, be there uh, multiple generations or have the potential to be because then you're making your decisions and succession planning. Now we'll come back to your question. Once that, once we know what we are, family first or business first, if we choose business first, now we're making the best decision for the business, not mm -hmm. for the family. Right. So then that's how that influences the succession plan. Right. So kind of taking the emotion out of it, if you like. There's still plenty of emotion, <laughs> but it, it, provides uh guide rails um right. to 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 help diffuse the emotion and bring the decision down to objectivity mm -hmm. so we ask that question early on so we can get an answer and a definition uh in an unemotional time mm -hmm. knowing that when we get to the actual decision there will be some emotions but we can mm -hmm. go back and say hey Remember the day we slapped the table and said, we're a business first family and this is what we meant. Well, yeah. here we are. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then, oh yeah, everybody goes, yeah, you're right. That's what we said. So that's, that's going to be the decision. Uh, and the other thing you mentioned is change. And I can imagine like change in any business can be, you know, it can be difficult in itself and, you know, take some level of, uh, you know, you got to get buy-in and, you know, there's some negotiation and, you know, horse trading and all that goes on. In a, in a family business, especially when generationally, like if you have people who want to make changes to the business or want to pivot or want to move outside of like their traditional, um, you know, target, I, I can imagine those can be very difficult conversations because, you know, there's a lot of people used to being involved in the decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So change is inevitable. Sure. Um, and human beings don't like change. And the primary reason why we don't like change is because it causes some sort of fear, mm -hmm. a, a fear of loss, a fear of con loss of control or attachment or identity, whatever it may be. So what we teach our family business executives to do is to really master is how to transition with change, how to how do individuals transition. And there's there's a process that everybody has to go through. It's uh, there's four stages of transition for change. You can't change is, uh, change is external to us, but how we transition with the change is internal. Mm -hmm. So we know that the, you know, we're going to resist. We're going to, first of all, we're going to deny that even change is necessary. Yep. Then we're going to resist it once we, okay, you say so, but I don't say so. And then we're going to eventually, hopefully can get to the third stage which we're going to explore what that change looks like. What does it feel like? What does it mean to me? And then most likely we're going to go back to denying and resistance. So we go back and forth through that. And eventually we get to the commit stage after we leave the exploration. So what we try to do with our executives is get them to understand that this is the process that everybody goes through, including you, the leader. Mm -hmm. And that process sometimes can take 30 seconds to a minute. And sometimes it can take three months. But the point is, is leaders have to get really, really good at leading people through that transition process and that way they can be more effective at implementing the change in their organization yeah no that's a, that's an that's excellent excellent uh, uh, advice and then i guess the other major it's probably another big major point is that point when they're considering selling the business right yeah and maybe not everybody's on board or that maybe some people are more than other how how does that dynamic often play out well, by design, mo most of our engagements are at least a year, if not multiple years, mm -hmm. but typically multiple years. But we try to ask our clients, our recurring clients every year, is this a time to reinvest in the business or is it a time to sell the business? Because we, so we want to really force that discussion mm -hmm. with the family leadership team. And, um, you know, it, it, it changes. Uh, I have many clients that, will put their foot down and say, we're never selling the business. We're going to keep it in the family. And it's for the benefit of future generations. And of course, I always say, well, but what if, what if a drunken sailor with a pocket full of money shows yeah. up on your doorstep and wants to buy your business? Well, it'll never happen. But, but let's yeah. talk about, well, what if it happens? what how are you going to make that decision and who's going to make the decision so we prepare the the leadership of the family 
for that scenario. And I will have to say, probably more times than not, the business doesn't sell. It does transition from generation to generation. But mm -hmm. we've had in the last probably 10 years, we've had four of our clients, four or five of our clients end up selling when they had no intentions of selling mm -hmm. because it just made more sense at where the family was. Some of the uh, successors in their family were just didn't want to be the successor. Um, they had a, a you know key death in the family. Mm -hmm. Some certain things have happened, and and then the economics of the sale you have to the family has to look at and go well you know we we have assets right now tied up in our business. Most of our clients have about ninety percent of their net worth tied up in their business, mm -hmm. and so now if this is an opportunity based upon where I am and my age and my stage in life to monetize that and manage, you know, let's, let's, let's manage these assets a little bit differently mm -hmm. uh, to, to manage the risk and, and preserve the wealth. So mm -hmm. everybody goes through that. We just help facilitate those conversations. Yeah, no, and it's gotta be, a, it's gotta be an emotional time in many ways. And uh, do you often, I mean, mostly do, do, do people go through that kind of buyer's remorse for a while where they're like, oh, I didn't want to yeah. sell, I shouldn't have sell my business. And then before they transition like completely? They do. I had a client, um, he called me just a few minutes before midnight. His uh, bank account was going to be funded after selling his business. He was going to have generational wealth instantly overnight. Mm -hmm. And he was um, um, he was in tears. He told me this is the worst day of my life. Right. And I could not I could not relate. I, I was tr trying to say, well, what? you're just about ready to get, you know, a wheelbarrow load of money mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to travel and be with your grandkids and you know, and he just said, I just sold my soul. And mm -hmm. so it was there. And this was a, this 10 years ago that that made me realize that my job is to help owners be prepared personally, not just have the business prepared, not just right. have the business attractive for a sale, but truly prepare the owner, not just from a financial perspective, but more importantly, from a purpose perspective. Mm -hmm. So your purpose for 30 years or 40 years was this business. Your identity has been this business. So now what? And so th that's, we actually, that's part of our succession planning process is we spend quite a bit of time on assessing personal readiness, business readiness. And, and, and we coach these, um, these owners of these businesses to prepare for their future uh, and and we we show them the truth that the real truth is your identity is not your business that yeah. your identity is not CEO founder of this mega mega corp. Uh, mm -hmm. You're a father, your grandfather, your your brother, your your son, your your community leader. Your identity is much bigger. And how are you going to uh, project that out now when you have more time? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's an emotional time. Oh, for sure. Um, and just finally, then, um, you know, we talked about some of the other issues, but what, what do you see? What are the big advantages of a family business? And if somebody was considering starting a business with their family, what would you say to them? Well, the advantages of a family business is uh, there's nothing more uh, fulfilling, in my opinion, than than owning something. Uh, I think that's the American dream. I want to own a home. I want to own a business. You um, tend to have more control, you think, of your destiny, so to speak. Uh, but that's not really what happens. Um, I think from an employee perspective, family businesses, you're, you know, are going to you're going to end up having a better culture. You're probably going to get higher wages. You're probably going to have less turnover mm -hmm. uh, and more opportunity generally. Right. Um, if you're thinking about starting a family business, um, I, th I think the first thing is, is, well, what is the business and is the business model going to be successful? Right. And, you know, and how is that, how are you going to perpetuate and scale that success? Because if you're not growing a business today, it's not like in the seventies and eighties when I started, everybody was just trying to do steady state. Let's find a place where we can just do steady state and repeat year after year. Mm -hmm. Today, you have to grow. You have to be changing. Yeah. It's very dynamic. So yeah. um, I think those are the things you got to really think about. 
Absolutely. Well, this has been fascinating, Rob. Thank you so much for giving us a, a, a window into the world of family businesses. All of Rob's uh, information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, Rob Ferguson, I founded uh, Ferguson Alliance 14 years ago, and uh, we help family businesses extend their lifespan. Uh, we think that's a major world problem. Uh, 1950, the lifespan of a family business was 60 years. It's now down to 24 years. And so that's our mission is to help reverse that trend. Yeah, well, that's fantastic work. And as I say, go, go check out uh, Ferguson Alliance. And thanks again, Rob. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon.